What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So you got the new R6. Well, I guess it's not very new. It's been it's been out for a year. You got the R6 over Christmas. You're super stoked. You're going out, you're filming, and your stuff isn't looking quite as good as you want it to. And you want to know the best settings for the R6. You came to the wrong video. But wait, I can tell you guys the settings that I use. And I'm pretty happy with them. And you probably saw some footage at the beginning. If not, you'll see some now. And if you like the way that looks, well, I'll show you what I did to uh, attain that look. So without further ado, we'll hop into it. All right, so recording this on my iPhone because I have to. Um, so we'll start off, we'll go into the menu. So for shooting mode, I make sure I am on manual because that is what's gonna give you the best customization for your settings. So, you know, you can customize your ISO, your F-stop and your shutter speed. So manual, of course, maybe record quality. So it only has IPB and IPB light on the R6. And if you don't know what that is, it's don't worry about it. It's yeah, don't, don't, don't even worry about it. Um, so I shoot 4K 23.98 frames per second or 24 frames per second um, for that's all for like my normal vlogging stuff or, you know, normal, normal footage. And if I'm gonna shoot slow-mo, then I go to 60 frames or 59.94 on 4K. I go like that and then hop out of here and then I bring my shutter speed to one over 125. So those are my settings for slow-mo. But we'll change it back so I don't forget. Change it back 24 frames. High frame rate, that's if you want to do 120 frames per second, but it drops you down to 1080p. So I like to keep my stuff 4K, so I just shoot 60 frames per second if I'm shooting slow. And then movie cropping, I don't use that, so I keep that disabled. Sound recording, I keep it to manual, and I make sure that uh, my voice is hitting around like 12, 12 decibels. Not too much higher than that. Um, the you can change that by changing the recording level. So you can bring it down, back like up, make it more sensitive. So I keep mine about like right there. All right. And I think that's it for the first one. So we'll go to the second one. Uh, I don't do, I don't think I do anything on this page. So we'll go to the next one. All right, white balance. Often I keep it on daylight. I find that's overall like the best look for my color grading. Um, sometimes I'll chuck it in auto white balance if I'm really lazy or I'll, uh, I'll adjust the settings. But yeah, sun daylight is usually what I keep it on even for these inside shots here. Um, yeah, so daylight, um, that's where you can choose custom white balance but I don't mess with it too much. And white balance correction. The R6 kind of gives off a uh, different, I don't know if it's like a reddish, kind of hue but it can give slight color change than like your typical Canon camera so you can play around with that if you want but I just leave it like that and then Canon log settings so I always shoot in C log C log 3 excuse me um, and if you want C log 3 you can go get the firmware update off of the Canon website but I'll put it in the link down in the description just to make it easy for you guys so if you do want to get C-Log3 and if you haven't updated your R6 already, uh, C-Log3 is going to give you the best dynamic range and I find overall with my color grading that it just oh, looks phenomenal. Love it. So C-Log3, my view assist is on so I can get a general idea of what it looks like and then my color space is BT709. That's just what I prefer. Um, I don't actually know too much. I know they're the like color spaces but I've just heard that 709 looks the best and that's, yeah, I'm not gonna pretend like I know exactly what that means. I just know that they're different color spaces. Um, so yeah, 709 works for me. All my stuff looks good. And then that's it for that. I don't really do anything there. Now, time-lapse, if you do wanna take a time-lapse, you have to turn C-Log3 off. You have to put it back to just a normal picture profile. Um, and I shoot time-lapses every once in a while. Um, I do for night lapses, That's it looks phenomenal. Um, and you, at nighttime, you're not gonna wanna shoot in C-Log anyways. So you have to turn C-Log off if you wanna do time lapse. Um, that's your movie self timer. Don't really use that much, but you can. 
All right, so for IS image stabilization, I keep it off because I don't like the digital IS because it crops in. Um, you'll notice if your lens doesn't have lens stabilization on it, it will give you another, uh, I think it's, well, let's just, let's, let's take this, uh, let's take this lens off and just see. I know you're not supposed to do this, but select it. There you go. So it gives you IS mode. So if you have uh, a lens that doesn't have uh, lens stabilization on it, then you can actually go in and actually turn IBIS on manually. But if you do have a lens that has, let's put this back on, image stabilization on it, then you will turn the IBIS on with the lens here. So I actually keep my IBIS off. So my lens stabilization has to go off as well, which is a bummer. I've talked about this a lot of times. Um, because I shoot with a 15 to 35 and you get IBIS wobbles. So like you'll notice if you shoot like vlogs or anything with this lens, you'll see like a warpiness go around and it kind of is disorientating. And I find this camera and lens is heavy enough together to stop like micro jitters. So I just keep it off. Um, but yeah, I'll let you guys experiment with that and find out what you like. But so yeah, so I keep digital IS off and where were we? Keep digital IS off. Oh, here we go, going around. Keep it off and then um, the IBIS I'll turn on if I'm shooting anything that's like 35 millimeter up. So if it goes any wider than 35, then I usually turn IBIS off because the warpiness is just too much. And those are my settings for the R6 and that's how I get the results that I get. Um, if you're looking for any kind of color grading tutorials or color uh, correction, anything like that, I have done videos in the past, so you can go check those out. I do have some in the pipeline coming in the future because I've tweaked it ever so slightly. So that just take a look out for that. Consider subscribing so you can uh, stay up to date with all that kind of stuff. And I think that's about it. I haven't done like a formal video like this for a while. Do you guys like these kind of videos? Do you like a bit of tutorials? Let me know down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else? No. I'm not going to say look out for the next video because it's going to be epic because that's what everybody says. And I feel like just don't say things and just do them. So yeah, anyways.